Hi everybody, my name is Annabelle. I work at City in the Community here in Manchester um, and I'm very excited to be here today. All right, let's do it then. To start off, I would like to ask you, why is girls' involvement so low in sport with fans and athletes and all? I think um, girls' involvement is is kind of, an engagement is so low, just purely the exposure, um, particularly here in the UK. The uh, Women's Super League's only just kind of really in its infant years in comparison to the men's side. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a growing sport. And I think that's primarily the, the main reason, you know, the lack of exposure on TV, radio, newspapers. I've got to say it's, it's hugely improved um, dramatically in the last few years, especially of, off the back of the Women's World Cup. Um, but I think a lot more can be done. Um, exposure to women's role models, I think, is massive. Um, you know, having those key figures that young girls can look up to um, and, and, and then actively kind of mimic them on the pitch, see them on TV. And then, you know, if, if they can get to a game and, and see their heroes in real life, I think that's massive and um, will be a real turning point in terms of increasing the exposure of, of women's football and sport in general. Um, I also think opportunities, that there's a lot more opportunities out there now. Um, you know, it's seen, it's starting to, there's starting to be a shift where it's socially, you know, the norm for, for girls to play football and actively be involved in football, not in, only just the playing side of the game, but the coaching side, uh, the refereeing side, even, you know, backroom staff, you know, physios, doctors, um, you know, support staff. I think that's massive. And um, I'm not saying we're anywhere near where we could be, but I'm saying that it's definitely we're on the right road and, and we've got to build. And it's almost like we've got to build this snowball effect in a way um, to get more girls kind of involved in the game and use these amazing role models that we have, especially here at City. We've got some incredible role models um, that are a huge part of, of what we do. You know, both both the Man City women's players, um, the coaching staff, uh, but also our young leaders, the program that we have here is inspiring young girls to kind of give them role models um, to look up to and inspire them to be more involved with the game. Yeah, as I've like been through, you know, I was in England for a bit. I'm from America. I'm in South Korea right now. So I've like really been able to experience firsthand like the difference in cultures when it comes to girls sports is that like oh no like the fight's still going and even in the places where it is big like we're definitely still fighting for that visibility and everything I, I completely agree you know our citizens giving project um that runs across the globe uh we've got young leaders here in manchester um and then a number of different places you know from from asia australia um across Africa um, and even into North and South America and I guess working closely with these these groups of young people that are trying to make the change in their communities you can really see the difference um, of girls participation across the board um, and their own individual experiences you know we've got girls that are, are part of that young leader program that might not necessarily um, be a part of girls only projects or girls empowerment projects but a part of of a variety of different um, tackling different social issues, but they all say the same and they all talk about their opportunities to play and how it was very limited and kind of the, the backlash that kind of came with that, maybe all from social norms, family expectations, um, and all these barriers that they had to participation. Um, it's been, it's, it's really interesting to see that, you know, what we have here in the UK and, and what might be the case in America or Australia, um, it is very different to, to different parts of the world. You know, there, there are key differences between here in the States, uh, here in Australia, and, you know, it is very individual, but I think off the back of that is as a group of, of global young leaders, we, you know, we're not in this fight alone. And I think that's really important to remember. We, you know, every nation and every country is in a different stage of kind of increasing participation amongst females that, we need to work together um, and that's that's the way that we're going to kind of snowball this is if we work together and we learn off each other 
we're, we're going to make a real, you know, real, real difference in, in improving um, those numbers that we see now. Yeah. So then kind of going off that track, what do you think is the single most important thing in combating all of that? That's a, that's a really difficult question because, you know, looking at different things, you, um, you know, different aspects like barriers to participation, access, um, funding, um, exposure, you know, just female role models, um, increasing visibility of the game. You know, there are so many different ones. Um, it, it is really difficult to kind of pinpoint just one. Um, but I think, you know, I, I kind of strongly believe in this and, um, I talk about it with my young leaders and a, a lot that we talk about having confidence as, as females um, in this space. Um, but I think before we ever have confidence, we need to have courage because you're stepping into a world that, um, you know, that is going to take a lot of courage to, to fight for what you want and fight for kind of your dreams. And I think, you know, to be amazing role models for, for the younger people in our community um, and the people, the young people we work with, we need to show them that it can be done and that we're not going to give up. So I think, you know, it's, it's kind of more on a personal, you know, have the, have the courage to seek out that funding, have the courage to, you know, um, chat to boards and, and governing bodies about making that change because um, it comes from us ultimately. Um, you know, we're here to make the change for the next generation. Um, we're here to make the change for our generation. I think, you know, we can't give up on, on where we are now. Um, there are still plenty of people in our age group that, that aren't playing football or engaging with sport. Um, and how can, we, how can we change that? How can we change those numbers? So, yeah, I think it's on a personal level um, to kind of spread that message and create those role models in our community yeah actually that's like the first time I've ever heard someone say courage but now that I think about it like I, there's been so many times in my life where I felt like I didn't I wasn't allowed to ask for something mm -hmm. um, that I wasn't allowed to play with the boys or that I shouldn't play too aggressively because it's not like ladylike like I lacked a lot of courage growing up because I didn't think I was allowed to have courage so I think that's huge I think yeah you know like a lot of my life I've, I've always said you know have the confidence to go and do it but you need that courage really you need that two seconds of absolute fear and then you know then you've got the confidence you have that two seconds you have the courage to do it the seconds of fear and then the confidence to go on and make that change yeah I love that that's awesome I'm yeah. gonna carry that with me like forever I, I, I've got to say it's not my own I, I picked that up off somebody else but that, oh. I guess that's what that's what it's all about isn't it you know yeah. it it's it's about learning from each other and and spreading that message yeah that I mean that's kind of like why we're doing this interview series I feel like uh, a big part of it is just being able to inspire anyone who's watching this really and whether you are a woman or not, if we can help you to know that you can make a difference, um, I feel like that's the biggest thing we can do for each other. And I think, you know, like as a, as a young girl growing up myself, I often said, you know, who's going to listen to me and who wants to know my story? It's so irrelevant in you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not some big uh, footballer. I've, you know, I'm, I'm not an, an Olympic athlete, you know, it's, but at the end of the day, it's not about, you know, my story and, and my, it's about how we can impact other people. And if, even if you just impact one person, you've made a change in their life and they could go on to impact a whole number of different people. Uh, that they may not have done because they've not had the the backing or the courage to go and do that. So, you know, your story is there to be heard. And I think just go for it, no matter what it is uh, that you're trying to, to do in life, whether that's become an Olympic athlete or, you know, run your first 5K or walk your first 5K. It doesn't matter. Every goal is a goal achieved. You know, every goal that you work towards 
and you succeed in it is a goal achieved no matter how big or small I love that so much (laughs) um so then when did you first personally realize that there was inequality in sport um that's that's a kind of a good question um I grew up with a uh, I grew grew up um abroad so overseas um from the UK and um me and my brother are very very close um I'd say he's, he's kind of my best friend um anything he could do I could do and uh it was always a bit of a competition even though he probably wouldn't like to admit that um it was um so growing up with him you know we kind of followed in each other's footsteps we'd go and play sports go we just love being outside so I never really kind of I mean I guess it, I had a few of the blinkers on um in terms of what I could and couldn't do and didn't didn't kind of really see that that gender barrier um, until probably I got to school um, and I saw that, you know, the opportunities at school were, you know, far and few between. Um, we'd always have the put, be put on the, the girls would always be put on the furthest pitch away. Uh, the fixtures were always at, at awkward times. And, you know, you start questioning, we... Um, we couldn't get a coach. We had a group of girls that wanted to play a particular sport um, and nobody would coach us, uh, but the boys were allowed to play um, that sport. So I think that was probably the first chance that that we that I kind of experienced that. And straight away, I kind of questioned it. I was so confused as to why the boys were allowed to play, but the girls weren't for, for the lack of a coach. And I think for me is... I think maybe that might be subconsciously why I actually got into coaching because, you know, I think to give that, that denied that group of girls the opportunity to engage in that sport. And I I guess I didn't want people to ever feel like that, ever feel like they couldn't belong, that they didn't belong um, in something they want to try. So um, yeah, I can remember being very, very frustrated um, and angry and upset, a very, a mix of emotions, I would say is probably the rest um, thing. And, um, from then on, I kind of the it opened up, and I I really did see the the lack of opportunity and the lack of kind of yeah I, I guess the lack of girls enjoying engaging in sport. I soon realised that it was all pretty much the same girls engaging um, in in sport at school, um, and and a lot of girls weren't really kind of bothered. And is it because they thought it was too competitive? Um, it was always the same girls engaging, you know, that the opportunity wasn't there for them. Um, you know, these are some of the questions that I'd love to go up back and ask my, you know, 14, 15, 16 year old self um, and try and find out those answers. Yeah. So when you talk about kind of lacking opportunities at school, was this like starting from a young age or did it become more visible as you got older? I think it definitely got more visible um, as as I got older. Um, I've looked, and being in the role I am, I'm very, very lucky to um, work with girls um, on a daily basis, um, be part of the outreach team here at City in the community. And I've, I've seen kind of firsthand this, this dropout rate that, that gets spoken about, ranging between like primary school and secondary school here in the UK. Um, I didn't think much of it when I was at school, but now looking back, I definitely kind of do see that, you know, primary school, it was kind of compulsory to do PE, everybody engaged. And then secondary school, you know, you get into exam times and, and thing, other things take a priority. Um, I definitely see that in my role now, um, engaging with, you know, uh, high school groups um, and then even just girls coming and taking part. But even so it, you know, that's what we're here to, to kind of look at in more detail and, and use the young leaders that we work with to try and tackle that. And how can we re-engage those that have become disengaged um, is kind of, is, is a massive part of, it's, it's been a massive part of my learning journey. And I, I continue to read articles and um, listen to webinars and, and just find out why. Um, and, and the answer is it it's not very clear. Um, so, you know, it's, Let's see if we can make a change. You know, you talked about um, your experience not being able to play that sport, subconsciously being the driving force behind your career choice. Could you like go a little bit more in depth 
into that? Like, why is that stuck so deeply in your memory? I think, um, you know, it's, uh, it was, it was, we got told that girls don't play that sport. So it was actually, um, it must have been off the back of um, some sort of major event. Um, but I think, if I can remember correctly, a group of girls wanted to start up a, a girls' cricket team. Um, because we, you know, we had a lot of other sports provide, you know, given the opportunity to play. And um, I think maybe it was because the boys were in a massive tournament and we thought, oh, well, if they can, we can kind of thing. Um, and we got told that girls don't play cricket. So for me, it was, you know, we can't play cricket. Automatically, in my mind, it was, hold on a second, you know, well, we can because, you know, we're doing PE. So what do you mean we can't play cricket? It just didn't make sense. Um, so I think that's why it kind of embedded into my head because there's so much out there about other girls are having these experiences. So it kind of, you know, like you can really resonate with, with those um, stories. I think that every woman athlete has can like remember a time when someone told them that they can't play the sport that they're playing. I'm really inspired that you kind of took that experience and you went with and you decided that we can't just keep living like that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, here in the UK, we've seen a huge increase in attendances at the Women's Super League. Um, in particular, you know, um, the Man City, Man United derby that happened um, at the Etihad. An incredible opportunity for, for those players to kind of play in that main stadium you know, in the Etihad, but also to have an incredible crowd that came on to support them and um, to kind of, to, to kind of, you know, egg them on and, and cheer them on. And, and, but also not just the players on the pitch, but, you know, show that it's actually a global game and it is, you know, it is for everyone. Um, and to see young girls in the crowd cheering, cheering their heroes on is an incredible feeling and definitely gave me goosebumps just kind of seeing and being around that atmosphere um as well so yeah it's just really incredible my favorite development recently is that the fact that women's sports aren't just for women anymore um little boys little girls dads moms grandpas grandmas everyone is allowed to enjoy women's sports and it's not just a girl thing anymore I think there's a huge step in the right direction um, you know, I can I can speak personally from that. My dad rang me um, the other, you know, few for be a few months ago now. COVID's making me lose track of time, but you know, he rang me up and he would just said, "You, I'm, I'm watching City." I said, "Oh, the, the, you know, I thought that you know the men play a different day." And he goes, "No, I'm watching the women's game. It's on TV." And he goes, "Wow, this is it. You know, like it's incredible. The standard, they they're incredible. You know, they're really really good." So. I mean, my dad now watches them on a regular basis because, you know, it, it's it's that conversation that I've had with him a lot is, I guess it's very similar to the same goals campaign that we run here at Manchester City. It's not just, you know, men's football, women's football, it's just football. We all kick the same ball, we all shoot in the same goals and we all play on the same pitch. You know, if you're if you're a fan of football, you're a fan of all types of football, whether that be men's football, women's football, disability football. Um, I've seen some incredible players um, from, a, from a disability side um, with, you know, ranging with all, all sorts. So I think, you know, if you're a fan of football, you're a fan of, of the game um, in, in, any, in any way it's played. You know, it gets passed down from generation to generation, um, from player to player. And I think that's, that's what we've got to, to go with. So it's not just football, it, it, it's the, it's, yeah, it's all about football, the game. Yeah, you know, that's the perfect segue to our next mm -hmm. question. It's what does United by Sport mean to you? I think, you know, I probably, sorry, I probably answered that a little bit early, but for me, it's kind of definitely, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question because there's so, like I said, there's so many different parts to that, but I think, you know, like it brings people together. Um, you know, you look off the back of the World Cup success here in um, the UK. Uh, it brought everybody, it brought a nation together. Um, you know, that belief that, that 
it's 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 a game that just inspires everybody um, because it's not just about the skill, it's about the teamwork, it's about the dedication, it's it's everything. It's about the social side of it, and I think that's that's what it's all about. Is for us, it brings people together. Um, it creates memories. Um, it creates emotions, good, bad, you know, everything in between. Um, and I think for me, it's, you know, how can we create these experiences for the young people in our community? Um, and that's very much what we what we aim to do here at City in the community is to create, you know, positive experiences, um, change people's lives and, um, yeah, and, and give them kind of lifelong involvement in, in sport and, and physical activity, um, giving them opportunities to, to kind of, you know um make their dreams come true i suppose is 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 the way to explain it but yeah it's uniting bringing everybody together forming that community i think is a is a massive part as well all right i've got a little bonus question for you then yeah um what come what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear no one fits in everyone belongs Wow. Okay. No one fits in. Everyone belongs. Wow. Okay. Because you, I, I, I really like that. And it's kind of hit, you know, hit me quite hard because everybody tries to fit into this, the idea of society into this idea of a box and, you know, like we're always trying to fit in, but actually, you know, fitting in that there's no need to fit in when you're made to stand out, I guess is, is kind of, you know, don't walk the path that you think is the right path walk your own path and make your own way um because everybody deserves to belong everybody belongs where they where they are right now um and i think especially in covid you know everybody's like oh well you know we've been inside for a whole year i think yeah we have but we've done it as a as a as a community and we're going to get through the other side as a community so you belong right here, right? You know, there's no need to fit in because you will always belong. Um, is is kind of I think that's the way I see that. So yeah, I hope that kind of answers the question. Yeah, you've hit it on the diet. Here at City, I've been. It's been amazing. I've learned so much here at my time at City in the community, um, and we continue to make an impact. Uh, my colleagues, um, I've worked incredibly hard over the last year to create normal or what we can call normal um in a world that is very not normal at the moment um and and they go out and they give 120 percent every single day so um yeah it's been really inspiring for me and they push me on every day um so yeah if you have any last words you want to share you can go ahead no i think i think the last thing that i'd like to say is for anybody watching this um that you know they want to try a new sport or they just want to get involved go and do it you know have that courage to try something new um you know we're coming back especially here in the UK things are starting to open up open up again and we're seeing a real kind of change in 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 the community um you know it's it's time to try things new try that thing that you've always wanted to because you know there's no better time than right now um to have the courage to do it yeah thank you all right well it was so nice speaking with you and we will see you all next week thank you very much for having me it's been a real pleasure